We have Ronald on today, um, and you know we're on the virtual art of storytelling. Thank you so much, Ronald, for uh, joining us today. Um, we're going to have an allotted time of 15 minutes, like I said, in the middle, and then we're also a public forum, so, you know, when we have people come in, you know, bear with, I'm with it. I'm with it. Okay, so go ahead and tell your story to us. Well... From the east side of Denver. Um, wasn't raised with much. So I, you know, so I, I wanted to make a better life for myself. So now I have. Um, got married in 2011, started my own business. It's actually booming, booming, booming. And uh, I'm just trying to do better for myself and help others along the way. Okay. Yes, yes. So tell better, us where it all started. I'm better if you ask, I'm sorry, I'm better if you ask me questions. Oh, you're better if I, if I ask you questions? That okay. works. <laughs> that works, that works. Yeah. <laughs> so you, I just you know, want to start, you know, and tell us, um, you know, you come from a single family home or a two-parent home, you have siblings, uh, if you don't mind sharing your age with us. Oh, that's fine. Um, no, no, okay, so... I come from, well, a mom and a dad. Um, it's 13 of us. I'm the baby. I have a twin sister. Um, being a baby, I was picked on, but I was also protected. <laughs> um, Phil would know where I come from. Phil would know more or less where my family spectrum, you know what I'm saying? Um, me and Phil grew up around the corner from each other. Okay. Okay. Was it was it rough growing up? Like when you when you have all them siblings, I know you had backup when like fights was going on, but how <laughs> how were the fights inside the home with your siblings? You know what? Um it was fights. It was fights. And sometimes the fights got out of hand. Sometimes I mean you fought like it was a struggle, you know what I'm saying? Because you're trying to come up, you're trying to get I mean, you you know, you're the baby, I'm the baby. So you want to try to, you know, you try, try to take somebody's spot. Just like in sports, if, if you just come in as a freshman, you want to take that senior spot. Yeah. So that's how it was with me. I, I mean, I was a baby, so I wanted to try to come and I wanted to move up the, you know, the food chain. But, I mean, it was, I mean, it, it was a struggle sometimes. I mean, even though I had two parents in the home, it was a struggle. Yeah. But mom made it happen. My dad, stepdad made it happen. And here 52 years later okay you said stepdad so it wasn't your uh biological dad it was not it was not it was my stepfather but, but the thing is my stepfather was with was with my mom when she was six months pregnant with me and my twin sister oh okay so wow. he raised me from birth so i say stepdad but it really is my dad right right and so with all with all those kids were they all of the same father or all same father except for me and my twin sister. They okay. had the same father except for me and my twin sister. Okay. And but my stepfather raised all of us as if we were his. And he had no kids. Okay. He was fresh out of the army. Um and met my mom when she was six months pregnant with me and my twin sister. So he had no kids. So it took the hell of a man to raise 13 kids that wasn't his. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So, okay. So, how old is your oldest sibling? My oldest sibling was 70 years old. 
So I'll, okay. give you, I'll, give, I'll give you the story. So my mom passed away in 2012, November, 12, November 10, 2012. My oldest sister was diagnosed with stage four brain cancer the day my mom passed away. Oh, wow. She died three months later. So therefore, um, I lost the two matriarchs in a three month span. All right. <clears throat> I'm sorry to hear that. That's definitely got to be hard. So, um, how many how many brothers do you have, and then how many sisters are there? It's four brothers, and then I had eight sisters. Actually, nine if I want to go off my biological head side. That actually okay. kept in touch with me. But it was uh, it was four brothers, including me, and then eight, eight girls. So. I mean, it's it's that's it's some pros and cons to it. I mean, you get to know um, they teach you how to love and respect women for sure, right? And on on top of that, though, my mom and dad taught that. My mom and dad taught you to love and respect women. My mom taught you to love and respect women, and my dad enforced it. I have a quick question, real quick. Um, so. With you losing your your sister and your mom so close, what did you do as a man to cope with and be able to express or actually use your feelings? You know, you know what, man. I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you and tell you, I was 44 years old when it happened, and I think when you're older, you learn to deal with stuff a lot different. Um, Knowing, like, you know, if, if, if someone in your family has an illness, then you kind of, you know, expect it, you know, I guess you can say, if, if it's expected. Now, if it's unexpected, I guess you can handle it different, but we have been going through with my mom for about roughly two and a half, three years, but it's still hard. But if I can, I'll tell you, I'll give a shout out to my mother in law because when my mom died, my mother in law never gave me that time to breathe. Like she stepped in and I mean, it was like I didn't lose a mom, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Although I did, even still to this day, it's been eight years, almost nine years. I could be driving down the street, see something, hear something, whatever, and I can start crying. And I, I mean, as a man, I'm not afraid to say it. I, you know what I mean? You breathe how you breathe, you know what I'm saying? But uh, I give my mother-in-law all the praise and glory because when my mom passed, she stepped in and like she was a mom to me. You know what I'm saying? And so I guess just to answer your question is when you're older, you deal with it different. You know, had I lost her when I was 12, 13, I'm sure it'd be a lot different. But as I'm since I'm older. I, I kind of dealt. I kind of took it, you know, fairly well. Okay, peace. Right. You can continue with um, your thought. So, so you said you grew up on the east side, correct? Right. Um. So, what would you say the east side was like then compared to what it is now? <coughs> oh man. Um. <laughs> well, first of all, it's very integrated. When I was coming up, we might have had one white family, two white families in a in like a mm, mile radius each way. <laughs> I put it to you this way: when I was coming up, there wasn't a white person in the neighborhood. If there's a white person in the neighborhood, it was the police. So other than that, I mean. The summer violence of 91 was ridiculous. Like it was killings like every day, probably five times a day. As of now, the East Side doesn't appear, I mean, yeah, you get killings every now and then, but it was not like it was. And I think it's a lot because of, of it being integrated now. You know, so there's a lot of white families there now. Well, there's probably more white families than there's black families, but. It's, uh, 
I don't know. I can say I had, I, I had a great childhood, though. But we could stay out. We didn't have to worry about, you know, somebody driving by shooting and killing us or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, now you got, I mean, you really got to look out. So it's, I mean, if I could, like, protecting my nephew, which feel you know, protecting my nephews was our job at the making sure they didn't get in no trouble making sure they were in the right places and make sure they were with the right people. You know what I mean? So it the biggest difference is just being so many different type of families. Like it's so many different nationalities. Right. Um, and would you say that's for the better or for the worse? <sighs> you know what? In, in, in a lot of cases, in a lot of cases, I guess, I guess I'm glad people are now finally taking pride in our neighborhood. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm glad people are now starting to see the value in our neighborhood. You know, before they, it was just, oh, it's the black neighborhood, it's the hood, it's the ghetto, yada, yada, yada. But now, they all want the hood or the ghetto. They all want to live there. So I think it's all about them. You know, it's what other people start to see in our neighborhood. I mean, even us, the bad thing I think is our grandmothers and grandfathers bought brick houses on the east side. And all the kids now are selling them away mm-hmm. for pennies. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? They're selling them and they're not, they're not, you're not getting what you're not getting your money's worth for these houses. You know, and that's the bad part that a lot of us was raised with no money. So when we see 100,000, 150,000, we jump at it when you hold out for 400,000. Mm-hmm. You know? Um, all right, so you you said that you you started your own business. If you can just give us a little background on that, uh, tell us about the business, what it, what it is, and, you know, when you got started with it. Okay, so I got married in 2011, and my wife's grandfather is Dave Smith. Um, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with Dave Smith, but he was a black Tuskegee Airman, and his office is well, actually, where Phil <laughs> Phil is at 26th, and and uh, yeah, right where Phil is right now. That's 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 where Dave Smith started. So, um, get with my wife and everything. Um, been in real estate. I just happened to go fix something one day and and enjoyed it. And so what I did is from that point forward, I started my own home remodel business and it's been going now since 2011 and it's going. So I, I would suggest to every, especially young black people, if you can start your own business, Get your small business loan. Put your put hey, put your mind where your put your mind where your money is, and the money will come back to you. You know what I'm saying? So so going back to um, uh, you know I'm assuming that that you were raised around um you know, gang influences and you know, um, weed, alcohol, all that stuff like that. Did you ever gangbang? No, 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 no. I was, and see, I grew up at 26 in Lafayette, so I was in the heart. In the 80s is when the Crips and Bloods and all that started. I grew up on 26 in Lafayette. I was in the heart of the Crips, but I went to East High School. So I went to school with all the Bloods. So it was like a catch-22 for me, so I had to play basketball. (laughs) So I started, so I started playing basketball, and then all the gang members was just like, "Oh no, that's Ronald. He plays basketball." So that was my, you know, I didn't have to fight my way home. Well, I had, you know, I had brothers, you know, I, well, I'd fight too, but if I had to, but I played basketball to keep me off the streets and out of trouble. Um, as far as weed and liquor, and I've never had a drink in my life. I never had a smoke or nothing in my life. Um, it was just something I just never did. You know what I mean? And all in high school, after the football games, after the basketball games, I mean, we don't, now don't get me wrong. I hung out with everybody that did all that. But 
but I was always considered the designated driver. So the thing is, it was, I mean, I saw it with my dad as far as liquor, but it was just something about it I just, I just never got into. So, but to the, the, the real question about the gangs, my mom sat upstairs on the bed and she didn't play that. She was a gang. She was a gang I was afraid of. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it wasn't no, it wasn't no, please. I you, I had to watch her. Instead, I in, watching my back in the streets. No, I was scared of the lady sat upstairs on the bed. Right. And that, you know what, that is so honorable and commendable. You know, I just, I just wanted to say that. Um, I think Scoop has a question. Uh, no, it's okay. You can go ahead. Uh, I did. So you talked about your mom, but were there any like figures like in the actual hood that maybe were gangbanging or in that lifestyle that tried to keep you on the path you were on instead of joining gangs, smoking and drinking and doing all that? Or was it just your mom being the influence? No, 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 man. We had, um, and I'm not sure if you guys know, but we had John Bailey, which is, mm-hmm. he ran the basketball joint effort. So we had John mm-hmm. Bailey, we had D-Ray, um, we also had A.B. Maxi at the Glen Arm. Um, you had, wait, when I'm sorry, I was, what was the second name you said? A.B. Maxi. His name was A.B. Maxi at the Glen Arm Rec Center. Okay. And also, not only that, when I was coming up, I mean, and, and I probably got you guys by years. So when I was coming up, yes, sir. the neighbor would get you. You know what <laughs> I mean? The next door neighbor, you know what I'm saying? They, you know, and they, they could take you home. But I'm going to tell you something, too, that's, that's probably more important. We also had policemen. We had police in the neighborhood when I was coming up. Now, when I was coming up, I never saw or never heard of a cop killing nobody. Not even in the neighborhood. Don't get me wrong. I understand social media and all that is more of a platform for all that stuff to come out. But when I was coming up, I never, we never heard of a cop killing nobody. Besides, the cops used to walk the neighborhood. So the cops knew everybody in the neighborhood. So in essence, nobody was suspicious because they knew everybody. So I've been trying to, I, got, I have a lot of friends on the DPD right now, and I've been trying to get them to talk to people, to tell them these cops nowadays need to walk the neighborhood. You get to know the people in your neighborhood, people will come out and support you more. But those cops aren't in the neighborhoods. These cops that's coming to these black and brown communities don't live in these black and brown communities that they police and know too. And that's no, no, um, no, you're right. No, 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 you're right. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. I'm just saying, even the ones that don't live in the neighborhood, if you get out your car and walk the neighborhood and introduce yourself to people so they know who you are. See, I, I think cops take on the role like, Android, like like they're droids. So people think they're droids. You know what I'm saying? They can't talk to people or whatever. But I believe if, if, if cops get out, walk the neighborhood, which when I was younger, they called it walking the beat. So you get out, you walk the neighborhood, you meet the people in your neighborhood that you patrol or whatever, then you don't know who's in that neighborhood. So we, we, we would have cops. If we're doing something wrong, oh, the cop would just grab us and take us home. Cause he knew where we lived and well obviously my mom he knew she sat upstairs on the bed and it was trouble but i'd rather the cops handle me than my mom all right <laughs> uh i have a quick question okay. um or yeah i guess it's a question can you just elaborate more on the importance of community or community back in the day my dad used to tell me kind of the similar what you're telling me how uh, a neighbor could catch you throwing some rocks and they'll whoop you and then send you home. Or I'm telling you. you. I'm so, telling you. Do you feel like uh, us as a commu- as communities should be trying to get back to something similar to that? I do. I do. And, and, and the reason why is because, well, okay, I do. But I'll tell you why I think we can't first. I think we can't because nowadays parents got the idea you better not touch my child. You know what I'm saying? So right then and there, you you gonna you have to fight. 
if you know if you touch another person's child, you got to fight. But back then, like it's my mom, serious. my parents, yeah, my my mom, my parents, they didn't care if somebody got you. If you got out of line, she would tell them get them. But nowadays, a parent tell you straight up in heartbeat, don't touch my kid. Like you better not hit my kid. Then it's then it's a fight. You know what I'm saying? But I do think we need to get back to, like they say, it takes a village. You know, and back then that's what it was, a village. But now they didn't got away from it. I mean, uh, and 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 go ahead, school. And just to add on to that, uh, how do you, how how do I say this? My my father also said that matriarchs or like grandmas, grandpas would sit on porches and whatnot and almost patrol the community like you're saying police would. Do you why do you feel like you don't we don't see any more like OGs or old heads sitting on the porch watching over kids? Well for, well for that main reason that people don't want you disciplining their kids no more. And it's like um uh My mom, well, Phil knows this for sure. My mom was sitting on the porch and she had nothing but, I mean, they, gang members, anybody had nothing but respect for her. Like they would walk down the street and get to my mom's porch and they'll pull their pants up because they're like, Miss Lewis is going to say something. And Phil, you can vouch for that. And the thing is, but I think some of these kids, a lot of the kids nowadays, there's no discipline at home. So if they're not being disciplined at home, they're going to be disciplined in the streets. And it's all about, they like younger kids, you don't respect your elders no more. We, we grew up, you had to say yes ma'am, no ma'am, yes sir, no sir. Now, they just say what they want to say. Right. Um, I think you bring up such a good point um, just with all of that like um, and I believe that like a lot of the times because kids are not being disciplined I don't think that um, it would be that effective nowadays to have cops patrol or walk around the neighborhood just because they, they're not getting disciplined at home so they're not going to be listening to no cop that doesn't look like them you know so I think it's just a, a whole thing of disrespect and I think that um I know for myself, I have a problem with authority, um, just because Good. of the just because of the way I grew up, just seeing okay. seeing a bad image of cops all my life. So right. now I'm at this point where, and my dad was, you know, whatever he was there, but he was whatever he was. I got so, you. So I I have a problem with authority. So now I'm looking at cops, and I'm looking at kind of like the black men in the community, and I'm like, oh well. I can't look up to neither one of y'all. So what would you kind of say to those people like to, to get them to back to the respect of the old days, I guess? Well, you know what, it, it, it goes back to those saying respect is given, um, you know, you have to earn respect. You know what I'm saying? You have to earn respect. It's, it goes both ways. I do think, however, black men, and I, I'll throw myself in that mix as well, we do have to get back to I think black men, we have to police our own community. You know what I mean? I think we have to, um, I mean, we can't leave it to somebody else to police our, our kids, you know? And, and when you when you do that, when you leave the community for the police to, to, for the police, to police, then you end up with shootings and all that kind of stuff from the police. But kids have to, I mean, it's, it's just a certain, I think, I think you're, I'll be honest, I think you're born with a certain respect. I mean, you know, I, don't, don't get me wrong. It's given, I, try, I mean, you know, you have to earn respect, you have to give respect. But I just don't think it's that hard to do that. But I think some people make it hard. Okay, we got G with a question. Uh -huh. Yeah, I, I had a question. I got to, you know, rephrase it because you kind of answered it um, when, you know, talking about, it, you know, it takes a village and, um, you know, with a lot of people who are, you know, having kids now, like, you know, most of my friends are new mothers or fathers into the game right now. And they're, you, they say, you know, that 
they want that village to help them with their kids, but then they, you know, turn around and it's like, don't talk to my kid like that, or <laughs> don't, you feel me, none of this, whatever. And me, uh, I, you know, don't have kids and I try to steer from other people's kids because I'm a check your kid. I'm that person. You feel me? If your child is in the wrong, your child is in the wrong. And that's how I was raised. You feel me? Right. A child is a child is a child and an adult is an adult. So if an adult is saying something to you, then just honorably you have to respect what they say. And if you don't like it, go get another adult. But as a child, you don't pop up out pop off out your mouth and you know rebuttal with another adult you go get another adult if you have that issue and I feel like that's not being taught anymore to the kids now it's just you know parents are allowing their kids to speak how they feel to adults which I mean we should you know children should have that right to you know elaborate their feelings and how they feel but I, it's a certain way of how you do it and so I you know, I guess my question here would be like what what kind of advice would you give to those parents to let them know like you know you your child is a child and adults are adults well i think i think my big problem with that is a lot and it's a lot of parents i think a lot of parents want to be friends with their kids and when you want to be friends with your kids i mean then i mean that's they're, you know i would well my mom would tell me i'm not your friend so you can't say what you want to to me like you know like that like what you're going to say to your friends but a lot of kids like if you if you don't have discipline at home and I don't mean whooping and spanking and all that kind of stuff I just mean my mom and my dad can look at me a certain way and I knew here it comes you know so but this day and age and I think the government has a lot to do with it kids know a parent ain't supposed well, shouldn't hit them. And they use that. I heard, a, I, I kid you not, I heard a kid the other day tell his mom, I'll call the police. You know what I'm saying? So, well, and my answer to that is, well, you might be dead before they get here. But, you know what I'm saying? But it's, it's just like, you. the biggest problem is parents want to be friends with their kids. And see, that's like like with my son. I, that, I think I have one of the most upstanding kids in the world. I should feel that way. But with me, he's very respectable. With people outside the house, I know when he leaves the house that he's going to represent this family well. You know what I'm saying? So I think I'm friends with my kid, but I'm still his dad first. But my thing is I like him. But what's more important to me is I love him. You know what I mean? And a lot of parents, yeah, they just like their kids. They don't love them. That's why a lot of things go on in that house and no one can, and by the time they get a hold of it, it's too late. So if you stop them from talking back or saying whatever you want to say early, you ain't got to deal with that later. Right, right. See, it's like my um, my niece's mom, my, my niece is one years old, mm -hmm. okay? Um, and she already like with her mom, you know, something happened and she goes, oh my gosh. And she just, and she pinches her and I be popping all like, I will, I will pop my niece on her fingers or her hand or I'll spank her. And I be telling her mom, my, her mom is older than me. I tell her, don't let this little girl think it's okay to pinch you or kick you or, oh my gosh. Cause she's one now. And so you letting it happen when she gets two, three, four, you've already been letting it happen. So when it gets to an age of understanding, she's not really going to care to listen yeah. to you because you allow it to happen when this is your child, this, this is your child. She has to, she has to have respect for you. You birth her and you allowing her to have those petty attitudes with you or it's the pension. It's the, it's the pension for me that gets me like she should not be pinching you at at all like that's not okay and right. you don't say anything to her you you laugh it off and so you laughing it off makes her think it's cute yeah see that's the thing it goes back to when I say like in my when I was coming up my mom taught you respect and my dad enforced it so if you have if you have a mom and a dad and they're not on the same accord yeah you know what I mean it's gonna you know, and then I, I run into a lot of people where the 
like the mom is saying one thing and the dad is telling them another thing. And then now the kids, you know, the kids confused because he's, he's like, my mom said I could, you know, tell the dad. And then if some of the dad said, he said, well, my mom said, my dad said I could. So I just think when you have kids like that, you know what I'm saying? I truly think kids can grow up off schedule. So like if I, if I bring to me anyway, if I bring, if I bring you to, if I bring you our son back at eight o'clock, and you bring him back at 10, you know, 10 o'clock at night when he's supposed to be in bed by 8.30, then I, I believe the kids grow up off schedule. And that's and that's that's a recipe for disaster. So um, I I wish my mama could raise every kid. <laughs> but I think we can do it. I think we can get back to it, though. I truly think we can get back to it because especially now with this whole... I think with this whole Black Lives Matter and, and all that now, I think Black people are starting to see we're better together and we're stronger together. So I think we can come back. I hope we do come back. But, I mean, we'll see. Uh, I had a quick question. Okay. Um, kind of going back to the kids, uh, it's a two-part question. Uh, do you feel like uh, now in today's age, kids are growing up faster than kids were growing up back in your day? And two, how do you feel about kids and profanity? Because I grew up not not where it, I was. It was acceptable for me to cuss, but my father almost enabled me to cuss. Like I used to come outside, throw my middle fingers up as a little little kid and you know cuss and stuff like that but i mean i grew up respectable you know you can ask philip he would he would have never do that i grew up like that <laughs> okay but, so oh wait what, what, okay, okay so that custom okay well you know I'll, I'll get that that second part then what was that first one again and the first one is do you feel like kids nowadays grow up fast gotta grow faster yeah. okay, um i do and i i think and i think it's all because of social media See, like when I was when I was a kid, my mom would say, "Go outside and play." You know what I'm saying? So nowadays, you don't see kids. Kids eight, seven, eight years old got iPhones. You know what I'm saying? We we had rotary phones. <laughs> so if you wanted to talk to somebody, you had to stay in the house because you couldn't go out unless you had a, a long phone cord. You go sit on the porch. You know what I mean? But I mean, when I was, just, I mean, we couldn't just go in the other room. When I was coming, like I said, we had to, if I want to talk to my girlfriend, we just went in the corner and like sat in the corner, you know, whispered on, you know, said our little stuff, you know what I'm saying? So I do think they grow, they grow faster. But I mean, you know what? That's not, I mean, it's not a bad thing, but I do think kids need to be outside playing more and not on video games all the time. Because I just think video game, video games don't teach you about life. We had games that we played in the middle of the street, red light, green light. We had high and go seek, high and go get it, whatever. But we played them. You know what I mean? And we was outside. So like 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 you see a lot of different people say, like, we drunk water out of water hose. Like that was the best water in the world. You know what I'm saying? So, but I think it's a good thing that kids are growing up faster. Some of them are smart, some are growing up smarter. But Ask to your part two question. Ah, boy, I was a cussing. <laughs> I was a cussing. I can't, hey man, you know what? I can't even see it in lies. <laughs> I was a cussing. And now, don't get me wrong now. I couldn't do it in front of my, here I am, I'm, I'm 52 now. My mom died when she was 44. Up until my mom died, I could never, I couldn't say lie in front of my mom. I, could, I couldn't even call, I couldn't sit on, I couldn't call you a nut. You know what I'm saying? I couldn't, I I had to say you telling the story. If I said you telling a lie, that's a cuss word. So I it is disrespectful. But I think a lot of kids nowadays, a lot of parents know what we went through. So they give their kids a little more leeway to cuss and all that. Like 
when my wife cussed in front of her mom, I tripped like, ooh, you know, you, you cuss. But I said because the way I was raised, I couldn't cuss in front of my mom. So when they said, I kind of, you know, like, oh, I don't, you know, I, I'd be looking for the shoe or something because my mom would throw something at you. So, I mean, cussing, yeah. I mean, I, you know. I have never heard Lisa say a cuss word. Oh, my God. Oh my God, Lisa will say a cuss word. Well, let me put it this way, Lala. She don't know how to cuss, but she'll say it. I mean, <laughs> she, she ain't. Okay, you know Lisa. She's, she ain't on, no. Okay, put it this way. If she cuss, something's wrong. Now I got to get her to go see, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, I mean, you know. That sounds but, better. Well, yeah, but she still don't know how to cuss. So it is what it is. But no, but seriously, yeah, I, I don't know. I think if you if a kid is just out in the streets cussing and all that, yeah, you know, that that's that's kind of, that's that's bad. You know what I'm saying? But but we all been with our friends when we were younger and we all had our conversations and some you know, we all cussed. But like I said, if you're out in public and you cussing now, now if you're out in the neighborhood and you cussing out grown people, then there's a problem. But if you with your little friends and, you know, whatever, hey, we all said nigga before we should have said it. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I try not to say it anymore. But it is what it is. Right. My my mom's from down south. I still can't curse in front of her, and she don't even give me a dope whooping. I'm still like, uh, uh-uh. uh. <laughs> yeah. She can't be like, I be like, um. <laughs> right. No. See, my mom, my mom was down was Spring Hill, Louisiana. So. Yeah. I I know how it go. <laughs> Woo. I'm not oh, sure if okay. I caught it, but have you tra- have you done any traveling? Oh, I'm gone always. We leave. <laughs> Tell them all we leave, we be gone. Not, you know what? We travel America. I, you know what? I'm gonna be honest with you. Neither does Lisa. My wife doesn't either. But I don't have the desire to travel out the country. You know, especially especially these last four years with Trump, because people hate Americans. You know, and I and if you kill me, you gonna kill me on American soil. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because over there they cut you up and put you in grinder, feed you the pigs and. I, I just don't have the desire to travel out the country. Now we've been to Mexico and stuff like that, but it's America's bad. I think America's good. Don't let me say that. I think America's run by ugly souls. You know what I'm saying? But I don't think I don't want to live anyplace else. Um, and then my my question is, do you have you have children? I do. Um, how many are how many? Yeah. Three, and they're all older than you. No, Ooh. no, no. Oh, no, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. I, I don't want to ask your age. My youngest is 23. My oldest is 33. Okay. I start, hey, I started young. Nothing but wrong. But I handled my business. Right. I handled it. I handled it. And that's just what I wanted to know. Cause we could... Dale, you got a question? Yeah, I got a few. Um, coming back to, I heard you speak on Black Lives Matter. Mm-hmm. What, what, what's your opinion on Black Lives Matter? Black Lives Matter strikes again. You know, I support the movement. I support the movement. I just wish they would come out when Blacks kill Blacks. Because a black life is a black life is a black life, regardless who took it. Thank you. That part. You know what I mean? So don't get me wrong. I, I support what they're I support them. I support what they're going through. On my Facebook, I got the Black Lives Matter, you know, background. I support that. I do have like, like I said, you just can't support it when a white person kills a black person. Because to me, what that's saying is. That black life is only important when a white person kills a black person. So, 
Yeah, that's I'm gonna leave it there. <laughs> Thank you for that. And I think Mark uh, had a question. Man, I man, I want to talk more about that. But about I want to answer my question. Or I'm okay. just ask my question. It's that, um, dang. Ooh. Yeah, I'm going to just ask my question. Um, so could you just let us know, um, Man, I don't. I really don't want to get off that topic. Does anybody want to go before me? Actually, no, I, hey, if you don't want to get off the topic, <laughs> I think we all want to dive into that one a little bit deeper. So if you want to uh, elaborate yeah. more on yeah, that, yeah, just go for it. Go, right, go for it. Whatever, just go for it. Yeah, I'll wait. I'll wait. Could you please? Well, I'm, uh, I'm. I'm. Mine's is a backtrack question. So it's a backtrack. So if Mark's not it. ready, I can go. Okay, so I just wanted to talk about um, or ask you kind of more so what you feel about, like, you know, everybody's talking about, like, the kids and the change of, like, what, what changed, like, from being, I was raised by a village. So, and I think I was born in 76, so I think I was kind of, like, at the end of where it started being the village or whatever, and um, because I was raised by a village, I had that village mentality. I will whoop everybody's kids, and you have to go get your mama, and she has to be over 30 for me, because if she's under 30, I will whoop her too. Right. So, that's just my mentality, you know what I'm right. saying? But right. I know that, that that causes trouble, so, you know, I kind of try and be... I just try and do people how I want them to do my kids. So I try and check people's kids in a way that I feel is up to par for what we're going through. I get love. But for me, I like to go off of scripture a lot. And the reason that I kind of see, and I just want to know what you think, like scripture wise, because I know you're a man okay. of faith. I don't have to ask that. Yep. Um, the Bible says, uh, for they will be weaker and wiser. And I think it's more so the weaker generation they can't handle, you know, if, if 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 some of the generation got disciplined the way that we got disciplined, mm -hmm. they'd be on suicide watch. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And so do you agree with that or do you just kind of feel like it's just more so just the downfall of the community? No, no, no. I agree, I agree with that. But I agree that I just think and I'm, I'm going to be totally honest with it. Because I was born in 68. So it was like it's like. I think a lot of the parents today are the reason why their kids are weak. You know, because if we outside, when we were younger, if we fall, if we run into a tree, whatever, they're like, get back up and try it again. But now a parent will go grab their kid and be like, oh, are you okay? Yada, yada. I never... I never received hugs when I was a kid, but that's how the dads were. You know what I mean? When I was, I, I never received hugs from my dad. And it was just because I think the older generation looked at affection as being a sign of weakness. You know what I'm saying? So I think, I think the parents now, they, their baby, their kids. I'll put, it, I'll put it in sports terms for you. Now, when I play basketball, oh, our coaches would dig into you. But you knew they were digging into you to make you better, to make you tougher, make you stronger. Now, you can't cuss at a kid. You can't say nothing crazy to a kid. And then we wonder why the sports in Colorado is whack. You know, the high school sports is, is not unlike a national level. But I, I, I do think, I, I agree with the Bible totally. But like I said, I, I believe parents these days, they make, their, they make their kids weak. I mean, you're prohibiting your kid to be as strong. You know what I mean? Yeah, you have a few kids here and there. But for the most part, hey, the Bible speaks, hey, it speaks. Right. And I, Miss Miss Lala, you are so right. You are so right. What, baby? On on, on the Bye, fact baby. that we're getting weaker over time, oh. like, um, 
they're they work mischief by a law that's another scripture so it's talking about how like they set up these laws like you can't beat your kid or you know stuff like that and that makes parents like oh i don't want to hit this kid and scared and stuff well, like back, that. i'm sorry i'm sorry to interrupt you but back to the bible it says you spare the rod you spoil the child right right so right. i mean and people don't understand it things in the bible ring true it might not happen right now but in your life it's gonna ring true at some point Absolutely. so i mean it's man that's i mean when you when you think about that you know Kids, I mean, when you think of it in Bible terms, kids are a lot weaker. Absolutely. And then just one more question, way off subject. I don't, I maybe missed or whatever. I was a few minutes late. What high school did you go to? East. Uh, Angels. Oh yeah, you said you said that. You said that. I'm sorry. Okay. Angels. Uh, Anybody? Y'all wait, wait, wait. Y'all got a problem with that? Boo. No problem. No. <laughs> East was popping. East was popping right. back then. Shut up, man. I'm rebel. <laughs> must oh, be man. Oh, man. My grandmother wait, 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 wait. I didn't like my high school neither though, but I didn't like my high school. So, so there's no more angels on here? <laughs> my grandma worked at that. East back around then, I think. What's her but name? she she her name was Miss Kelly. But did you know my um Oh Miss Kelly in the Miss Kelly, you talking about Miss Kelly in the tennis office? Yep. Y'all know Miss Kelly. Too she funny. was mean, huh? Oh. She was a mean lady. Miss Kelly? Not in yeah. school, she wasn't. No, oh. huh? You know what? No, nah. well, you know what? Let me put. Hey, let, let me put it this way. She wasn't mean. Okay. But she was one of them parents back in the day. Right. But see, here's the difference. Here's the difference. All the people, all the teachers in the offices, the teachers in the classrooms, they taught in the class, but they also taught you life lessons when you out the class. Like nowadays, I don't know what they're doing. Because no. we like Miss Kelly, you walk in the morning into the tens on Miss Kelly. Oh, yeah, she asked you what would you do this weekend, and did you get in trouble or you know something like that? I mean, it was so it was a lot different. I think that has a lot to do with it too. A lot of the teachers, I don't. The teachers love their job because of the you know they get paid. They don't love it because of the kids. Right. I think I think our teachers loved us. Like our teachers would take us to dinner, take us to lunch, take us home, you know, places, stuff like that. So they, they kind of showed that they care. So there's laws on that too, though, too. Uh, you got to be careful now as a teacher. <laughs> well, you just don't go by yourself. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, you take another, you take another teacher with you, you know, and, or, or you invite the parents. <laughs> so. Right. Um, so I'm going to have Mark ask his question and then we're going to have to start wrapping it up. We're going to have to have you come back for a part two. Um, we can do that. Mark, what Whatever y'all want. Okay, so um, just if I could propose, um, I guess uh, just a way that I think of Black Lives Matter, just to get back on that topic just for one second. Okay. Um, you spoke about um, like caring about Black lives when it's Black on Black. And I don't refute that point at all. Uh, I definitely agree with you. But I feel like the movement is um, more focused on the killings of Blacks and then no type of consequence or no form of, like, it feels like... Um, like they don't, they don't care. on the police on... Um, like, Black no one cares. Yeah, exactly. I got exactly. You. But, like, I know if one of my homies go kill another black man he could face football numbers for time yeah. but a police officer can kill a black man and then continue to do his job or get paid and from and then sit at home like I, I feel like Go ahead, I'll give you. yeah so if you could just um I don't know just share what you feel looking at Black Lives Matter as far as that because I do agree with you black on black I do agree with you what you said but I just Okay, so no, okay, no, 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 you're right though, you're right. And, and no, that's why I said, no, I agree with what there's, there, the whole movement, everything, I agree with it totally. I agree with it totally. And when I said, it just seemed like, okay, when a black person kills a black person, yeah, you're right. I mean, they're, they're, if they get caught, they're gonna be looking at some major time. I get it. Mm -hmm. um, I just think when, not only Black Lives Matter, 
as a community, we got to care. You know what I mean? Right, Not yeah. just Black Lives Matter. So no, I, I, I'm I with the movement. I get it. I understand it. I'm down. But if we don't care about our own community, mm-hmm. that's why you see they don't care about it. You see what I'm mm-hmm. saying? They don't care about our community because we don't care. You yeah, know what I mean? So, and if you ever, I'm sure you've seen it before where it says, somebody says, well, why don't y'all stop black on black crime? Mm-hmm. Well, that, that's, that's their go-to because they're like, yeah. well, why do you care if we do it if you don't care if you do it? Right. You know what I'm saying? But I'm with you though. I'm with the, the whole black lives thing. I'm with it. I'm, 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 I, I feel their car. I didn't got into the parades and you know what I mean? When they was going through the neighborhoods, hunking and all that, I was in, I was in that line. But it's, we have to care first about us. Nobody's gonna care about us if we don't care about us. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Understood. Um, if there, and, and I have a whole philosophy on Black Lives Matter and it's not a positive one. But I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna go into it right now because we need to start wrapping up. So if there's anything, <laughs> if there's anything that you uh, really want people to know from our conversation today, what would it be? It takes a village. Mm-hmm. Period. Period. And when when we and like you said, it takes a village. When we care about us, they'll care about us. Absolutely. Period. Exactly. And I and I totally agree on you talking about uh, policing our own neighborhoods. Just a lot all of that. Yeah, all the points you brought out today were really good. And I really appreciate it. Um, you coming out. We'll have um, time for about one more question. Um, if anybody has one. I lost it. You, you ever you ever been locked up, Ronald? No. Never been. And I'm prison. trying no. Never, never smoke. Never. Okay, drink. I'm not, okay. I'm, I, do, you, no. do you understand how rare of a black man you are? <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 But, I, but I'm going to say this, Phil. I'm going to say this, and I'm not being cocky then, but I think I'm too cute for prison. They're going right. to try to get me. <laughs> <laughs> they, hey, I ain't trying to feel. Hey, Phil, I'm 6'2, about 240. I ain't built for prison. <laughs> <laughs> all right. No. Uh, all right. So with that said, too, um, oh, I think Phil just cut out. Phil froze. Yeah, he froze. Um, okay. Don't want to let him be great. He probably had a really good uh, question. Uh, no. Oh wait, there he comes back. Is he back? Is he back? Is he back? Phil, ask me? that question again. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so right now, Ronald, um, with you being, you said 56? 52. 52. Um, at 52 right now, what, what's your what's your goals at 52? You know what, man? Just to live. I mean, I, I, I didn't get everything else. I'm, I got to get my son out of college and, man, take care of my family. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's I want to keep, I want to keep building my business. You know, I want to keep building my business. I want to keep, you know, I want to leave a will instead of a bill. Right. Mm. Yes, indeed. Oh. <laughs> yes, indeed. There we go. So Generational will. I, I think that's good parting that's words. Okay. Right there. I think that's good parting words right there. What y'all think? Yeah, that is. So I'm going to, I'm going to, um, okay. So here at Mackham, we do our three snaps at the end. We try to do it on unison. So, I'm going to count to three, okay? and we're going to do three snaps, okay? It's going to, you know, we're going to do one snap. We're going to make, wait a minute. Then we're going to do another snap. Then we do another. Okay? Snap your fingers? Yeah, snap your fingers. Okay. Okay. You and we can do it. Okay. Okay, one, <laughs> two, three. <laughs> okay, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for coming in. Um, yes, sir. Thank you, Ronald, for coming. Right. I wish y'all nothing but peace and blessings to everybody yes, over here. Yes, thank you. If y'all, if y'all, if y'all need me, if y'all need me, Phil knows how to get me. Absolutely. And I'm available. I'm a, I'm available for everybody. Much love. Just,